The evolutionary trends in plants are similar to the evolutionary trends that we saw in both invertebrate and vertebrate animals, from simple to more and more complex. Adaptations in plants allow the organisms to live with less and less available water. The first land plants that we see are bryophytes, and they're quickly followed by ferns in evolutionary time. Here in Houston, they're all around us since our climate is very humid much of the year. So let's take a look at these two groups, and next time you're out at a park or a golf course, look around and see if you can spot any bryophytes or ferns. I bet you do. So get your papers ready, wide right, skinny left, and let the fun begin. Most people don't notice the bryophytes around them, but if you stop and take a look a bit more carefully, you'll see that they're actually very common. Bryophytes are low growing, they're usually found in damp, shady places, and they are nonvascular. Nonvascular means they don't have xylem or phloem. It means they have to acquire water by osmosis. So they have to have a constant source of water. They can't be very far away at all. Bryophyte plants are small, less than an inch high most of the time and they take in water through specialized cells called rhizoids that we see here at the bottom of this in this diagram. Rhizoids take up water and nutrients so they act like roots but they're not true roots. They're single cells or sometimes only two or three cells long and they do not have vascular tissue. Water moves around by osmosis. So rhizoids, kind of like a root but not quite. As we said in the first set of notes, haploid and diploid generations alternate in most plants, but in bryophytes, both stages are present and identifiable at the same time, as you can see in this diagram. But if we take a look at the life cycle, we see what happens here. Starting at the far left, a water drop carries the gamete from the male plant to the female plant. These are the gametophytes. Upon fertilization, the sporophyte stage begins to grow from the gametophyte. This diploid stage, in this diploid stage, meiosis produces haploid spores. Wind carries the spores out and they fall to the wet ground and grow into more gametophytes starting the cycle all over again. So alternate generations are present at the same time. At the bottom you see the gametophyte stage and at the top you see the sporophyte stage. So you just might be thinking, okay, that's all there is to know about bryophytes, but you would be not right. There's more. There are three main types of bryophytes and I know you're just dying to know what they are, so I won't waste any of your time. The first and most common are the mosses. You find them on the ground, on the sides of trees, on rocks, just about any shady, moist place. Next are ones called liverworts. These are less common and they have this unusual umbrella shape to their sporophyte stage. The gametophyte stage is what you see down on the ground. But again, they're found in dark, shady, damp areas. Those are liverworts. Lastly are the hornworts, so named because of their little horns that are the sporophyte stage, those little devils. Again, the gametophyte stage is what looks kind of leafy. Mosses are also used by humans quite a bit, especially those that are into gardening. There's a type of moss called sphagnum. It's very plentiful, and as we discovered, when it's dried out and bagged, it's extremely helpful in keeping moisture in the soil. It also helps lower the pH of soil, making it more acidic. That's important if you're trying to grow certain plants like azaleas. They like acidic soil. So, what do we need to take away from this little presentation? What do we need to know about bryophytes? Well, First of all, I need to know about rhizoids. How is it like a root? How is it different? 
what do rhizoids do and where are they located? Why are mosses always found in shady damp areas? Okay, how come we don't ever see them in dry areas? And what's so unusual about the reproductive cycle of mosses? Okay, what's the big deal about that one? And lastly, remember the old saying, a rolling stone gathers no moss? Yeah, which ones have not and which ones have gathered moss here? See you in class, guys.